Hello and welcome everyone to another episode. Yes, so I ended up making a few slight changes to our racket here, but the one thing I'm going to mention that I think is amazing is uh, the amount of feedback I've gotten from the first episode and the second episode, I mind you, uh, I shot right after the first episode, so some of the feedback that you guys have given me, I haven't responded back yet, at least through video, but the one thing I want to mention is thank you for the tips and everything. I really do appreciate it because it's stuff that I can mention so everyone else knows. So some of the things that you guys are mentioning is taking ground samples uh, that I didn't do. Um, and also doing EVAs as well. So I think this episode we will be doing an EVA uh, and definitely trying to get to orbit. I think right now the way the rocket is designed I feel like we're pretty good. Now the other thing I want to mention is a few people were saying oh well you should go to the moon there's people that already gone to the moon with just the base parts. Yes I understand these things I am not going to be doing that, only because of the fact that I want to do this more of the legitimate way. I do understand that, you know, it is possible. Everything in this game is always possible. You just got to engineer it enough to where it will work. But I will not be doing that. I have to thank the other subscriber for giving me the name of this rocket, which is the Icarus 3. I don't know much about... Uh, mythology or anything like that so I really don't know about this guy or if, even if I'm pronouncing his name correctly uh, so yeah this is looking amazing I, I think this might work so let's get this thing on the launch pad and uh, let's see what we can get out of it so I've been working somewhat hard on this I've also been working on something else that I should mention it's going to kind of carry along with uh, a tutorial section that I plan on doing. Even though I already have one, I have a rocket design tutorial that I'm thinking about doing and really covering it, even though I am myself, I'm not the best rocket designer by far compared to some of these other people on the Kerbal Space Program forums which if you're not a part of definitely go there and check that stuff out because there's probably a question that you want to have answered and probably somebody else has already asked that question so you can just find your answers there it's a compendium of Kerbal knowledge so it's amazing on how much stuff is there so I've I've used it myself on certain questions they have challenges everything else so I have been having fun with this as well the person that is featured at the end of this video is mister plastic sporks which he's doing some amazing stuff in Kerbal so if you feel free go over there and check that stuff out but yeah so I don't know if I'm going to be doing very much atmospheric testing it really doesn't look like, I mean, we could be earning a little bit of stuff here and there. I think I'll stick with what we can get here. You know, 1.1 science. The one thing I've noticed that is, I don't, for some reason, it's not the science that I'm earning isn't carrying over. And I'm really just waiting tirelessly until I can unlock these solar panels at least the very small ones because that will at least give us some form of power now the one thing that I will be doing eventually as well is once I unlock some satellite parts and I have like some you know solar panels and stuff like that I will start launching some very basic satellites in order to you know further the knowledge and you know the science portion and things should be looking a lot better after that so we'll have like some very basic science missions all right time to start doing our little turn here i usually wait until we reach the outer portion of the atmosphere here this main part here and uh, then i'll start doing all the crazy stuff as far as doing the turn and you know really getting everything like that all set up so I think we should be hitting an orbit this episode. That's 
kind of the major milestone. Hopefully, we'll achieve an orbit. Just keep turning this down. And uh, once we hit about 70, I think we'll be okay. So it's looking like it, we're about to hit 70. That That is looking actually pretty good as it is right now. Our fuel is looking amazing. So I, I really can't wait until I unlock some more features and stuff like that. So I think after this mission, though, we should have a little bit more compared to my previous episodes. At least I hope. So I'm going to turn the, the uh, engines down here. We do not need to be using this much, or at least accelerating this much when we're in pretty much still inside the atmosphere. There's really no point. And uh, let's see what we can get. Uh, we'll wait until we get our a to our AP. So I've been having a lot of fun with this. I think it really does add a new, new amount of kind of mystery to the game and new things to the game because it's not that it's getting old for me but it really will help like later people who are playing this game some of the newer people who keep on jumping on board as this game progresses um i really do think it will help a lot of them in understanding how to build a rocket so that is kind of one of the things that I think is a really good thing uh, because a lot of people will resort to getting mods and everything else in order to just build a rocket to get to orbit because they don't know what they're doing and to me that's kind of a sad thing a little bit because this game has so much more to offer without being modded so it to me it's just kind of like a waste so it looks like the glue, or, oh, the glue, the goo is clumped into a sphere and it appears to become brittle. It's amazing. I, I guess we got a little mini moon inside of our goo chamber. It's um, absolutely amazing. So uh, it's telling me we do not have enough electric charge for the communitron. I don't know. I, see, I don't know. I, the amount of uh, electrical power is just the thing that really drives me nuts right now in this game so I it, once we get a solar panel unlocked uh, that's the first thing that is going to be slapped onto this so let's see what we can get we're gonna do an EVA a very basic EVA I'll just turn on the SAS just to uh, stabilize the rocket I'll speed it up a little bit too just so nothing crazy happens we don't even have RCS so let's see um yeah no what am I trying to do EVA is over here so this will be our first EVA first orbits and uh, the one thing I was thinking that would be kind of fun that would add a new feature to the game at least sort of is the pack itself shouldn't come like stock you should have to research the pack as well and this is mostly because these kind of things had to be developed, but then they would also have to add a tethering feature to the game because the, um, I don't know if it was Mercury that were the first ones to actually leave the capsule, but uh, then they would have to tether themselves to the capsule so they wouldn't float away from it or anything like that. But, you know, I thought that would be kind of cool to have something like that I, I I don't know if anyone would agree with me because honestly I think this kind of thing should be researched it's really kind of this thing didn't these things didn't exist for a very long time so we'll take an EVA report which you just click on your Kerbal and uh, then you can just store the data and uh, what was this store experiments Oh, you can you can store the experiments inside. Okay, that's kind of cool. But we're not trying to do that. We're just trying to get back in. So get back in here. This will be our first complete orbit, I think. Uh, I'm going to try. I, I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try to land somewhere near the uh, Kerbal launch sites. I don't know if you would want to call, uh, call that Houston or Cape Canaveral or... Whatever you want to call it, but I mean, Houston's the main communications hub from what I understand. 
to Cape Canaveral is where they launch. And uh, I, I just don't, I don't know. So, But it, it would be really cool to see some kind of progression in this game as far as, like, you know, the jetpacks and everything else. Um, you know, I've seen some mods where they basically have, like, propeller-type engines where you start off basically at the very beginnings of flight. And you work from flight all the way to building your rockets and stuff like that. But I, I really don't know about these things. Like, I, I... See, like, rocketry has kind of been around for a while. It's been around longer, at least, than the, like, flight in, in certain aspects. I mean, if you want to date it back really far, you can talk about the Chinese rockets and stuff like that. Or, um... You know, a lot of the testing that they used to do with rocketry and stuff like that. But flight and rocketry kind of have the same past where, I mean, you could even argue that the Egyptians had blimps, I believe, or some... I, I can't even honestly remember what race, or I mean not race, but uh, civilization had like blimps and certain things that they would use during battle and... I honestly don't know. I, I don't remember anymore. It's I, I, so much. There's only so much history you can pick up before you really forget about a lot of these things. So let's see. Time to get us back down to the surface. Hopefully, we land somewhere near the Kerbal Space State, uh, the Kerbal uh, Launch Area, whatever you want to call it. I think we're going to end up landing somewhere about right here, which isn't that bad, but I kind of figured we'd be a little bit closer. We just got to, you know, whenever the chute actually deploys, I don't know when the chute will be deployed exactly. And the worst part is, is you can't even time warp because of the fact that it will destroy the chute. But yeah, we're, we're going to pass way overhead. We're going to pass way, way overhead. But I'm going to speed most of this up, and uh, I'll see you once we've landed, or at least we're getting close to landing. And we got another successful mission under our belts, hopefully. I hope this works. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So we kind of ran out of battery power once again. This is the number one pressing issue right now, and I really hope that everything kind of solves itself. So the one thing I'm going to try, and I want to see if this is a possibility in the game, at least currently or whatever, but... You know, somebody told me to take a ground sample. I'm going to see if you can take some kind of, like, if there's, like, an ocean on a planet, if you can take some kind of sample of the water or something like that, if that's even possible. So, let's see when we touch down. I'll just do a quick EVA and see if that does anything. If we can get anything. You know what? I'm not going to do it, actually. I take that back. I, I don't want to get out of this module and then end up having Jeb, like, basically stuck in the middle of the ocean. So, let's recover this vessel and see what we got. Hopefully we got enough, we got enough, what is it, like 40 or 50 we need to unlock the uh, solar panels. So I got 31 science. Um, let's see. Yep. Yeah. Uh, not enough to unlock, or no, not the solar panels, but the battery is what we needed. So I think I'm going to invest it in both of these, or at least one of these, I should say. And the number one thing I think we should aim for is the radial decouplers. So this will help us build a little bit bigger rockets. So this will work out pretty well. So let's see what else this is opening up. We got another radial decoupler. I never really used this one. And the tricoupler, and we got the struts, which I think I might end up 
kind of changing over for that. I don't know. Um, the whole power portion of this game is kind of the part that I'm really concerned with. But what we're going to do, um, our next launch, I think we'll end up building a little bit bigger of a rocket, getting a lot more science done, and really trying to add on a lot more. So... You can see I have 13 science now. It changes. I really feel like it changes. That it some aspect of it gets deleted or something. So, anyways, guys. Um, once again, uh, at the end of this video, you'll see the featured person of the week is Mr. Uh, whoa, is uh, Plastic Sporks. So feel free to go check out some of his Kerbal stuff. Uh, if you like what you see here, subscribe. There's always more to come. To all you new people, welcome. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time.